Yo, what's up, everyone? My name's Dave, and you suck at programming. And today, we're going to talk about some of the pitfalls with using the timeout command. I don't know if you know about the timeout command. I've seen people use it. You run in your terminal, you would say timeout, an amount of time, and then a command you want to actually run. It's a GNU utility. I believe it's part of the core utilities. Uh, so you only find on a system with or a system with GNU utilities unless you install it. Um, but I've seen a lot of people use this in scripts, and there are some things you might get wrong. There's some pitfalls to avoid. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's jump into it. Let's see what we got here. So we have a basic command of zero, 00, but the first thing you notice is we have my long command. This doesn't have a number in front of it. So we're gonna look at this. We're gonna use this command a lot in my examples. So let's take a look at my long command. What does it do? It's a bash script. We echo starting, we sleep for five seconds, and then we print done. There's no secrets here, there's no tricks. It literally does what it says it's gonna do. We run it and it says starting command and then it hangs for five seconds and then it prints done. Cool, simple. So let's jump into it. Here's the basic version of timeout. So you do timeout, one second, my long command. So this will run the command that's in our current directory and it will only run it for one second. So what happens when we run this? It'll say starting command and then it will exit right away because it killed it because it went over a second. If we look at the return code, we can see that it had a failure. One, two, four. If we man timeout, uh, was it one, two, four? Yeah, we can see if command ties out or times out and preserve status is not specified. So it erred. It was timeout that gave us that error. Cool. That's super useful. Well, what else do we have? Here's something that I have seen done, and I want to show why this is a pitfall. You can make a function in Bass. Let's make a function called my long function, and it's the exact same as the command, but it's just in a function. Starting function, sleep for five, echo done, and we're going to run that, but with a timeout of one second. So what's going to happen when we run this? Well, guess what? It's going to fail. It's going to fail because timeout is an external command. So timeout doesn't know about the functions in your shell. Timeout is going to look for a program called my long function. And it doesn't exist. There is no program named my long function in my path. It's only in my current directory. And in that case, it was only a function. I can't find it. So what can we do? You might think to yourself, oh, come on, Dave, this is easy. I know better than this. Instead of running the command, we can run bash with a dash C and we can say run my long function. Well, you're onto something, but let's see what happens when we run this. Still doesn't work. That's because we forked bash. We forked an exact a new copy of bash that did not know about the function that we made, the my long function. And that's because functions aren't preserved when you fork and exact bash. So what can we do? Well, did you know this? This is really fun. You can export the function. So we can make a function here, exact same as we've been seeing, export dash F, the name of the function. And then we can run timeout one second bash minus C, my long function. There are two types of people watching this video right now. And if alarm bells are going off in your head, that congratulations, you survived 2014. In 2014, there was a vulnerability around exporting functions in Bash. It's called shell shock. If you lived around it, I'm so sorry. I was working as a system engineer, uh, system administrator at the time, sorry, technical operations. And my God, did I have to know about shell shock, okay? If you didn't, awesome. Go look it up. It's fun little history. If you had to live through it, my brothers and sisters, I'm so sorry, because I did too. But... All that aside, what can we do here? We can export that function, and then we can run bash minus C. We can run this. Nope, that's the wrong script. We can run this, and look at that. It works. It was actually given to the forked and exact version of bash. How does that work, though? So that's why I made this bonus script. Let's take a look. So we're going to make the function. We're going to export it. But instead of running it, we're going to run a command called printenv. Printenv allows you to print an environmental variable by name. So this is the name of the environmental variable. This is what bash does. Bash will take your function, stringify it, and put in this variable, bash underscore func underscore the name of your function, percent percent. Really weird name, really gnarly name, but when you run it, this is what you get. So when bash runs and it sees environmental variables like that, it will take them and parse them as a function and make them accessible into your environment. Super interesting functionality of bash. Just something to be aware of, but you can export functions in Bash. So if you're ever in the situation where you want to use the timeout command, this is one way to do it. 